again, David here, and I'm uh, back in my workshop. Today I want to do something that I haven't done before, that's kind of from the same region of uh, materials and topics that I love to work with in stop motion. But it isn't stop motion, but it's also puppet related. It's about these bigger kinds of puppets that you don't animate frame by frame by moving them tiny increments but that you move through a puppet actor, a puppet master, yeah, either with sticks or with hands or with motors, big puppets that you actually move in front of the camera, maybe together with actors by themselves, reacting and acting with each other. And the two most important things to make your puppet move, to make it seem alive, probably are the mouth and the eyes. The mouth has to move like this and the eyes have to move around, up and down, uh, maybe have a blink to seem alive. And while there are a lot of tutorials online on how to make simple foam puppets with simple mouth mechanisms where you can put your hand in and open and close basically the um, mouth, which is wonderful. I think there are very few tutorials and videos on making eyes, making simple, cheap eye mechanisms for bigger hand moved, hand acted puppets. Although I've never done this before, I want to just jump in how I usually do and experiment, experiment around with materials and try to make it as cheap as possible and professionally looking as possible. Maybe you can learn something while I'm doing this. Have fun watching me fail or succeed. I don't know yet. Yeah, let's just jump right in and let's have some fun with big foam puppets and their eye mechanisms. Let's go! So, the materials include two separable clear acrylic spheres, two balls, clear wrap foil, some paint and some air drying clay. As for tools, some kind of glue, a rotary tool or small drill, the soldering iron and a scroll saw make things easier but you can do this build without them. Let's start by measuring out and cutting a base plate for our acrylic domes. Let's glue the outside dome in place and then cover them with some foil. There will be a lot of test fitting and turning of the rather rough clay ball in there and we don't want the sphere to get scratches before we even get to use it. The soldering iron is great to make a hole in the star foam without making a lot of dust and dirt, but you can use a drill or a rotary tool as well.
The styrofoam balls that I got are too small, so I add a bit of clay. While the clay is drying, we can prepare the backside dome. I thought when you cut out a little circle, you can move the eyes inside the spheres with the sticks, but they also won't fall out as long as it's not too big and the eyeballs aren't too small. After sanding my eyeballs to make them fairly evenly round and priming them, I put them in my drill to find the center and also to make centered pupils and irises. Use acrylic paint, water paint and pencils to paint the eye and I give the whole thing a high glossy spray coat. Since the spheres that I bought have this little hole hanger thing, I thought I'm gonna use it to screw the back side on instead of gluing it. So if I ever wanted to make changes to the eyeballs, I could.
Then I make a wooden pivot joint with another one of those tiny golden screws. That way the eye's movements are always exactly parallel. It works pretty well, but to eliminate the last bit of wiggle room, I put another strip of wood on the other side as well. Also, I put some screw locking glue on the screw, because I feel like the movement of the joint would unscrew the nut pretty quickly. So that's the side view, it doesn't take away that much space inside a puppet or costume I think. And the sticks on the eyeballs are already longer than necessary. You could cut them shorter, the backside cover spheres could also be cut open even more if you wanted more eye movement. But for me this is a pretty good range already. And I kind of made this so it can be controlled by hand, but of course you don't have to do that. The back side of the eye plate, for example, has enough space for an Arduino and a couple servos. So if you wanted, you could put a loop on it, let the eyes move through that loop forever. If you wanted to do a one-person public appearance, for example, where you don't really care what the eyes are doing, but you also want to move arms or a mouth mechanism with your hands, that could be very helpful. Or you could remote control them when uh, a puppeteer is carrying the mechanism on the head in some movie shoot type scenario. I mean just add a simple foam puppet mouth and you can make great puppet that you can operate with two hands. Or play around with some fur. I just bought this great stuff and when I hold the eyes in front of it my mind already starts to wonder. There are a ton of possibilities but if you're curious what I'll do with this super fluffy fur let's say next week's video might be interesting for you. So that's uh, what I got from my little eye mechanism experiment. I hope you liked it. If you did and aren't subscribed already, please support my channel by doing that. If you are subscribed already, check if you uh, hit the little notification bell because that makes you actually see my new uploads. Yeah, thanks for coming by. See you in another video maybe if you like.